there is evolving evidence that higher risk patients should take more aspirin than just one. So 160 or 162 instead of the baby aspirin, which is 81 milligrams, that's quite a common thing to see these days. And more and more high risk obstetrics specialists like maternal fetal medicine specialists and even the fertility specialists are going to that. I've been advocating for aspirin for so long, I can't even remember. And we made videos about it, I think in the first year of this show. So it's been out there for a very long time talking about the benefits of aspirin in infertility patients. So uh, 162 is probably the appropriate dose for you. From a progesterone standpoint, um, we use 200 vaginally three times a day until we get them to 12 weeks. And then we cut the dose in half and continue it. And my rationale for that is it's very clear that progesterone supports the pregnancy and reduces preterm labor. The studies that have looked at whether or not you can prevent miscarriages and preterm labor have all been flawed because they start the progesterone after the pregnancy. But when you're doing IVF, you're starting it before they're even pregnant. And I think it makes a huge difference. So in my practice, we have a very, very low rate of preterm labor. And I think it's largely in part because all of our patients are on progesterone. So who do I put on progesterone? I put all my patients on progesterone and I keep them all on the vag proj all the way up until 36 weeks, after which it's not really important if the baby's born at that point or not. They all do really well.